Hello anatomy students. In this podcast I'm going to be reviewing muscles that move the shoulder and the arm. This is the trapezius. It's a large, flat, superficial muscle that covers the posterior neck and the upper portion of the posterior trunk. And it's shaped like a diamond or a kite. We're just seeing half of it here on the model. The left half has been removed so we can see some of the deeper muscles of the back. It's located medially at the skull and the vertebral column and extends laterally out to the pectoral girdle. Its origin is on the occipital bone of the skull here at the superior nuchal line as well as the spinous processes of the vertebrae from C7 down through T12. It inserts onto the clavicles anteriorly and here on the scapula at its spine and the acromion process. The actions of the trapezius include elevation, depression, rotation, retraction, or adduction of the scapula. It's also used in arm rotation and extends the head at the neck. The latissimus dorsi is a large and wide muscle located on the inferior portion of the back. Even though it's on the back, it's used to move the arm. You may have heard of it by its nickname, the lats, or the swimmer's muscle because of its actions in swimming movements. Its many origins include the spinous processes of vertebrae from T7 down through the five lumbar vertebrae, the lower three to four ribs, as well as the lumbar vertebrae themselves and the sacrum, the iliac crest of the coxal bone, and the inferior angle of the scapula. It inserts onto the humerus. The actions of the latissimus dorsi include extension, adduction, and medial rotation of the arm at the shoulder. Adduction is bringing the arms back into the sides of the body, adding them back to the body. Medial rotation is where the arm rotates to the median or midline of the body. The latissimus dorsi also moves the shoulder and arm inferiorly or downward and posteriorly or backwards. This is the pectoralis major. You might know this muscle as the pex, found here on the chest. Major is a reference to this muscle being the larger of the two pectoralis muscles. The other is the pectoralis minor, which is just deep to the pectoralis major, shown here on the left side of the model. The pectoralis major is a large fan-shaped muscle with origins on the clavicle, the sternum, as well as the costal cartilages of ribs one through six. It inserts on the proximal humerus of the arm at the greater tubercle. The pectoralis major is a major muscle of arm flexion, flexing the arm at the shoulder. It also performs adduction and medial rotation of the arm at the shoulder. This is the serratus anterior. Serratus is a reference to its shape, which resembles the serrated edge of a knife. Its origin is on the anterior surfaces of ribs one through nine. It inserts on the medial border of the anterior scapula. The serratus anterior protracts or abducts and upwardly rotates the scapula 
which means that it pushes it forward and upward and brings it away from the sides of the body. It also helps elevate the ribs because it allows our arms to swing in a punching movement. It's often nicknamed the boxer's muscle. The deltoid is a large muscle that sits near the shoulder and it's named after its triangular shape which resembles the Greek letter delta. Its origins include the clavicle and the scapula. In fact, we can remove the deltoid and see its origin points here on the spine of the scapula as well as the acromion. The deltoid inserts on the humerus at the deltoid tuberosity. The deltoid moves the arm in a variety of ways. It flexes, extends, medially and laterally rotates, and abducts the arm at the shoulder. The coracobrachialis is a rope-like muscle found on the medial surface of the upper arm. Its name is a reference to its origin and insertion points. I can remove the deltoid to show more of the origin point where the coracobrachialis originates on the coracoid process of the scapula and it inserts on the mid-humerus, which is the brachial region here of the upper arm. The actions of the coracobrachialis include flexion and adduction of the arm at the shoulder. Looking at the posterior shoulder, we can see the supraspinatus. The supraspinatus is named after its origin, the supraspinous fossa, which is the groove in the superior region directly above the spine of the scapula. It inserts onto the humerus at its greater tubercle. The actions of the supraspinatus include abduction of the arm at the shoulder. It's also one of the rotator cuff muscles. It helps to stabilize the head of the humerus in the glenoid cavity of the scapula. And just under the supraspinatus, is the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus is also named after its origin, which is the infraspinous fossa, the inferior groove just below the spine of the scapula. It also shares the same insertion point as the supraspinatus, the greater tubercle of the humerus. The actions of the infraspinatus include lateral rotation of the arm at the shoulder. It's also one of the rotator cuff muscles helping to stabilize the head of the humerus in the glenoid cavity of the scapula. This is the teres minor. It's located just inferior to the infraspinatus. Teres is a name that describes the rope-like shape of this muscle. Minor is a reference to it being the smaller of the two teres muscles. The teres major is located just below the teres minor. Its origin is on the lateral or axillary border of the scapula. And, like the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, it inserts onto the greater tubercle of the humerus. The teres minor is also one of the rotator cuff muscles, and, like the infraspinatus, it also helps to laterally rotate the arm at the shoulder. It also helps to extend the arm at the shoulder. Located on the anterior scapula is the subscapularis. Its origin is on the subscapular fossa. 
here on the anterior scapula facing the ribs, and it inserts onto the lesser tubercle of the humerus. The subscapularis is the last of the four rotator cuff muscles, and its actions include medial rotation of the arm at the scapula. An easy way to remember the four muscles of the rotator cuff is as the SITS muscle group, S-I-T-S, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and the subscapularis. Also think of it this way. If a pro baseball pitcher injures his rotator cuff, he now sits down in the minor leagues. Minor refers to the fact that it's the teres minor, not the teres major, that's in the rotator cuff group. This is the teres major, located just inferior to the teres minor. Major is a reference to it being the larger of the two teres muscles. Its origin is on the lateral border and inferior angle of the scapula, and it inserts onto the anterior humerus. The actions of the teres major include extension, adduction, and medial rotation of the arm at the shoulder. Unlike the teres minor, the major is not one of the rotator cuff muscles.